Hello Overclockers, my name's Apec, King of Overclocking, Jack of All Trades and Master of every single one of them, especially lifting some damn heavy weights. In this video, we're going to be covering the new graphics card by AMD, the 9070 XT. And what we're going to be covering about the card is the cooling performance, the power draw, and the overclocking and other tuning facilities available on the card. So, all that being said, let's lay the smack down on this GPU. First, let's look at the cooler design and the aesthetics and a little bit about this 9070 XT chip that AMD have just developed. This card next to me is a Sapphire Pure OC card. And as you can see on the card here, the cooler is three slots in size. It's got a triple fan design, which has several heat pipes. Now, if you look at the back here, you can see a full aluminium backplate. And we can see that the PCB of the card's cut off around here. So all this extra area here is full of heat pipes and aluminium fins to extract even more heat out of the GPU core, the memory modules, and away from the hotspot and PCB, whilst obviously keeping the fans spinning reasonably low so you don't get much noise. As far as connectivity goes from the power supply, you've got two eight pin uh, connectors to go in here. So they are not using uh, the, the high power connector that Nvidia have chosen to go with. They're using a traditional connector, uh, which it makes the card definitely more compatible. The Sapphire Pure OC, obviously what we've got here is a white design and this will fit in with your monochrome builds, white case, white motherboard, white memory, or indeed an all black build if you wanna have a card that just stands out from the crowd. I chose this particular card because obviously the Pure OC version is an overclocking version uh, and it's got really good uh, power delivery above the stock AMD design so we can try and get more tuning options from the card. So as well as uh, the beefy cooler design and the good looks, Sapphire to even extract more heat out of the core on uh, this GPU, I've also upgraded the thermal interface material. I mean, when I was testing this card, the cooler did a really good job and the fans never got noisy, no matter what loads I threw at it. And sometimes I was benchmarking for hours on end. So I would say overall, this cooler is very good. And the results for the cooler do back up what my instinct were on this. Uh, the temps of the core uh, even maxed out over many hours of benchmarking, never got over 55 degrees C. The hotspot uh, never got over 83 degrees C and the memory never got over 90 degrees C. The wattage this card pulled at absolutely maximum load was 331 watts, which I've already said didn't result in the fans becoming noisy at all. In fact, you couldn't hear them above the noise of the triple AIO that I was using to cool the CPU on my test rig. So, all that being said about the aesthetics uh, and the cooler on this bad boy next to me, now let's go on and discuss what's the meat of 9070 XT. This card has 16 gigabytes of DDR6 VRAM on a 256-bit bus. The GPU clock speed at stock is 2400 MHz with a boost speed of 2970 MHz. This Sapphire Pure Edition next to me, however, boosted to 3010 MHz as per stock. But I actually found when running at stock in my testing, it actually boosted even higher than that up to around 3.2 gigahertz, which is a very solid clock for stock on this Sapphire Pure OC. The memory clock speed at stock is 24 to 38 megahertz, and the TDP at stock is 304 watts. AMD obviously renamed this card uh, as a 9070 XT to complete directly with the RTX 5070 Ti. That being said, what was the system I used to test this particular card? As usual, I used an Intel Core 9 Ultra 285K CPU, overclocked 5.7 on the performance cores and 4.8 on the efficiency cores. The memory I had installed in the system was G-Skill and I had that running XMP at 8400 MHz. The motherboard I used was an Asus Extreme board to make sure we have good power delivery and good stability in the whole platform and of course good power delivery and stability in the PSU Express slots to the GPU. The PSU I used was my standard 8-pack 2000 watt PSU that I've been using probably for the last 10 years. Again, to make sure that we had plenty of power overhead and good quality power going to the GPU. The NVMe drive I used was the SN850. 
uh, from Western Digital, uh, one terabyte capacity, uh, and obviously I had that with the latest Windows 11 updates put on the drive, and it was the driver that was uh, given to me uh, by AMD, which I believe that they are gonna update very soon or supersede immediately on launch. But I have to say, I actually had no problems with the driver that they gave me and was a bit able to complete all the functionality I, that I did. In fact, the driver uh, had everything enabled overclocking and tuning within the driver from day one, uh, and I could make all adjustments from within that driver and everything uh, was reported as working correctly by other monitoring software. I'd, you know, but working in the background to check everything was, was up and running well. So if I had a clock, car clock speed, the card would react. If I had memory clock speed, the card would react. If I adjusted fans, the card reacted and so on and so on. So at this time, I didn't need any third party overclocking software to get the card uh, doing exactly as I wanted. I just used everything within the driver. So all that being said, what was the actual performance of this card when running through my suite of benchmarks? Well, you know what others are gonna do on YouTube, and that's the stock results you've already seen. But we're a bit better than that here on Overclockers. And in fact, I'm a lot better than that being eight pack. So what we're gonna do is get some overclocking done and some tuning and find out how we can make this card really sing. So what I did overclocking wise for this card was managed to add uh, plus 150 megahertz on the core for fully stock gaming capable performance. And I managed to add plus 250 megahertz on the memory. Again, for fully stable 24 uh, seven gaming and benchmarking performance. This resulted in a core overclock of 3,372 megahertz versus the stock clock, which maxed out at 3,250 megahertz. The memory clock went from 2,786 megahertz uh, versus the stock clock, which was 2,505 megahertz. This uh, overall resulted in a 362 watt versus 331 watt uh, power increase, which was a 9.3% power increase. Temperature wise, the memory temp went up just a couple of degrees for this extra performance. Obviously, Blender does not support AMD, so I couldn't do any rendering testing with this GPU. For those who are expecting Blender, tough luck. So, the results from my testing with the overclocking are on the screen now. 3D Mark Firestrike at 1080p, due to overclocking above stock, went up 8.2%. Time Spy at 4K went up 3.9%. Time Spy at 1440p went up 3.5%. Port Royal at 4K went up 3.8%. Port Royal at 1440p went up 3.5%. Final Fantasy at 4K went up 4.7%. Superposition went up 3.2%. Superposition at 4K went up 4.4%. Valley at 1080p went up 6.5%. And Luxmark went up 4.8%. So the average increase for overclocking uh, across all those benchmarks was 4.65% which is a really solid boost when you're comparing uh, against stock. And stock is already uh, certainly a very good performance for a card aimed at this particular segment of the market. So having extracted this extra performance through overclocking, I thought I'd go for the poor man's choice, the undervolting, and see how high I could uh, overclock the card uh, and what offset I could use uh, whilst undervolting at these clocks uh, to see if we could get any overall gain. Well, I'm pleased to report here that by uh, undervolting by uh, 150 millivolts, everything remained 24 7, 365 stable as it was when I was overclocking with the same clocks as overclocking. Um, well, the same theoretical clocks as overclocking, should I say, because with plus 150 megahertz on the core and plus 250 megahertz on the memory, which was the same as when you were overclocking, with minus 150 millivolts on the voltage offset or on the undervolting offset, whatever you want to call it, we actually then got a higher boost clock overall by, because we we're reducing temperatures and we we're reducing power demands on the board. And this resulted in the uh, GPU then being able to boost on the core to a massive 3,420 megahertz. So we basically, we we had the exact same overclocking settings, which I can't emphasize enough, because I was really surprised by this. And we reduced the voltage by minus 150 millivolts, and therefore we got actually more performance uh, than just overclocking alone. 
which like I say, I was uh, very surprised. When under vaulting, the power draw went down by a couple of watts, uh, which is good for you scrooges out there. Temperature wires from under vaulting, both GPU and hotspot temperature stayed virtually the same. What we saw then uh, from this under vaulting, as well as overclocking, like I said, we saw an even higher boost clock of 3, 4, 20 megahertz, if I remember correctly, but certainly over 3.4 gigahertz, which is a crazy high boost clock on such a card. All that being said, now let's look at what overclocking and under vaulting have on our performance graphs. Those will be on the screen now. We saw Firestrike 1080p coming in at now at 7.9% uh, improvement above stock. We saw TimeSpike 4K coming in at 10% above stock. We saw TimeSpike 1440p coming in at 9.4% above stock. We saw Port Royal at 4K coming in at 9.4% above stock. We saw Port Royal at 1440p uh, coming in at 10.4% above stock. Final Fantasy at 4K was coming in at 4.4%. 7% above stock, Superposition 1080p at 5.1% above stock, Superposition 4K at 9.3% above stock, Valley at 1080p was coming in at 6.9% above stock, uh, Luxmark was coming in at 6.5% above stock. So this was an average increase across all our benchmark suite of 7.9% above stock, which is a, a crazy improvement really in performance. And if you look at some of our benchmarks as well, TimeSpy at 4K, for example, uh, Port Royal at 1440p, we're coming in at way over 10% above stock, which is very solid. So in conclusion to all this, there's no reason not to undervolt because you can actually maintain the same clock frequencies as when you're overclocking and gain even more boost from saving a bit of temperature and power draw and allowing the inbuilt overclocking algorithm to push the core even higher. And what we got for overvolting actually was 3.3% more performance uh, when you compare to overclocking alone. So overclocking gains you a good solid amount, undervolting gains you even more while saving power draw, saving temperatures and saving your pennies or your coffers from your electricity bill. So what's the eight pack lowdown on this card? I think this is a great card for the price and obviously me being an overclocker and tuner, I really like the overclocking and tuning options that are already available for the card and that work straight out of the box with the AMD driver. And obviously, there is a free performance to be had by overclocking and undervolting the card. And as usual with AMD, I'm sure that the drivers will improve over time in terms of performance. But I do have to report, and I was happy with, the fact that the drivers were working for every single test that I ran, and they were working for every single tuning option I tried. So well done to AMD for that. If you want to buy a system with this GPU within the system, I suggest you do, because it's a great GPU. We'll have plenty available on our website. We'll also obviously, from launch, have plenty of different cards available. Whether you like the white aesthetic or not, we'll have black cards and all different types of cards from all the AIB partners who are building uh, this 9070 XT. So do check out our website if you want to purchase this very solid card and very good value for money GPU offering. And finally, as always, don't like the video, don't subscribe to our YouTube channel, don't subscribe to any of my socials or any of that nonsense. But do, of course, check out my biceps, which you'll notice have become a little bit leaner recently. And also, do check out my AMD CPU video, a CPU that go perfectly well with this card, the 9800X3D. Now, there's a lot of reviews about that CPU on YouTube, but only mine has any substance, so check that out.